we've been sitting for 75 days visiting all of the people in our hometown going to the doctors but tomorrow we're pulling out and so we're doing the usual preparations here and I usually start that preparation with my breakfast which I'm letting cool here before I put it away but you can see that Sue is already hard at work let's go interrupt her and see what she's doing so uh, you may have noticed that we finally broke down and bought a decent toad and uh, you know, I thought the color scheme is perfect. You know, the uh, rag top matches, you know, the highlights on the rig and the color. And it's the Jeep Wrangler version. And we really, really love it. And yeah. What? What? Not our Jeep. It's that's, not? That's our neighbors. Not our Jeep. Our oh. bikes wouldn't fit in there anyways. We well, don't want a Jeep. I we thought... want our minivan. Well, it was in my dreams, I think. It's, it is in your dreams. I know it is. No, we don't have a new Jeep, as unbelievable as it sounds. That yellow line is the beginning of our next door neighbor's campground. Sue, I uh, thought I'd come out and see if you need any help here. How are you doing? Yeah, I need some moral support. I'm doing okay. Ray next time. <clears throat> oh. Mark likes this before we take off. It does makes it easier if it does rain. So we're uh, anxious not to be driving in rain, but anxious to see how my new installation of my wipers works. I put uh, smaller ones on. And one of the other things we're gonna do today, is we're gonna pack up our bikes so we don't have to do that tomorrow morning. I think we have about a five or six hour trek tomorrow. And that's unusual for us. Uh, so since we're a little rusty, take it off. We're gonna try to get an early start. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap all this up shortly. Sue's doing laundry right now. And then I will fill the tank uh, with water. Uh, maybe only uh, 50, 60%, something like that. We don't really need it, but you never wanna count on that when you're RVing. Uh, the day you break down is the day you're going to have an empty water tank and you won't even be able to use your restroom facilities. So what are you doing there, Sue? It's time to pack the bikes up. So we have a certain way to do it. Okay, I thought you used to use some ramps and stuff here. Maybe I got some splaining to do here. Splaining to do. New, new and improved. We made a sled, and I'll put the episode to that up in the corner somewhere. We made a sled that had wheels on the front and I would take, I would leave the handlebars on, but I would take the front wheel off to lower it. And it went on the sled, very solid. I would pick up the handle on the back of the sled and I would ride it in there. I was real proud of myself how clever I was. And actually it was quite easy. The problem was, was that this joint on the handlebars, which was right here, this bolted joint, which I had to take these bolts out all the time, and it started to become obvious that that did not like to be uh, taken apart, swiveled down so that these handlebars weren't up high. And taking this wheel off here was starting to cause front brake errors on the control and the uh, hydraulic cylinders 
when they would come in sometimes they were a little tough to get in long story short after one year of using it we abandoned it because we took a new approach where we started to take this stem out and just take this uh, pinch fitting out and we have a backpack that we put on the neck and then we put the handlebars in the backpack to keep this handlebar edge away from the windows in the side of our Honda here. This has worked much better. It's a lot easier to do. Uh, you do have to have two people. It's a two person job. You can do it if you're just our one person solo, but you only want to do that intermittently. Okay. Hey, 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 get back on your mark. Come on. Okay. Over the years, the O-Gym team has come into agreement that all heavy lifting is done by Sue. And in a moment here, you'll see the contortionist moves that she has to do when uh, she's on the front end here and negotiating the front tire into position. We hold the bicycle from slamming into us in the event of an accident by using both of the seat belts and then we have a bungee cord on it just to give it a little tilt uh, in one direction. Works really good. It's about 8.45 in the morning on July 20th and we're getting ready to leave. And I want to show you one of the things that I've been doing since day one for my jacks. I've been spraying the cylinders down with WD-40 before I retract them. And there's probably a fair amount of people in the audience are thinking, hey, uh, you know, WD-40 is not a lubricant. It's a solvent and, uh, you know, it's for displacing water. Well, that's exactly what HWH told me to use. And rather than do what other folks are telling me to do sometimes, I defer to the experts and this was one of the times uh, the cylinder ex itself actually retracts into oil once it gets past the seal and really what I'm just trying to do is help it wash away any debris that's on that cylinder in the over five years that Sue and I have been RVing. We have never driven away from the post with our electric attached. And as you can see, we've got nothing attached here. We packed up last night, so I didn't have to do this uh, in the morning. But we, of course, leave the electric in because we had two air conditioners running and all sorts of things. So you could conceivably drive away if you're not paying attention. Well, this is even worse, this spot, because you'll notice the power cord immediately had to duck underneath the rig and plug into the pedestal here. So this is a situation where uh, a lot higher probability of you driving away with your uh, electrical power cord in, still attached. One of the tricks that I started to use was I would intentionally leave this door open when I'm done with my water bay right here I would leave my electric bay door open even if my slide was still uh, out there would be no interference there and I would leave the door open now why would I do that well that was just one more cue when I'm ready to leave and I look in my rear view mirror I could see that door hanging open and that has helped me uh, a couple of times over the five plus years. And uh, between Sue and I, we've been pretty lucky. But uh, luck only gets you so far. So here's the other gadget I use. I don't use it all the time, I'm not going to lie to you. But in situations like this, where I showed you that the cord ducks underneath the rig, I use these things. Now these are in our Amazon store. Uh, just so you know exactly what they are 
and this one says hookups there's about I don't know 10 of these or something you know ladder tow uh, tow dolly all sorts of different things and then you get a couple of blanks that you can uh, personalize them but I just take this and I put this on the steering wheel and I never take it off until I take that power off so you'll notice I put it back on and I left it how are we doing back there boss oh okay Break that flow. Yep, I'm not breaking your flow because your name's Sue. She just took out one of two leafs we have. You can see how far that thing comes out. It comes out far enough that we actually have a file cabinet that we use. Uh, you know, when you run a YouTube channel like OGIM, you got to have a lot of extra file space. All right? Come on, honey, I'm trying to make us look cool. We are cool. Okay. You are cool. Woo. All right. Anything to report in on? Nope, I'll do my own reporting. Okay. All right, we're almost ready to go. There's Mark back there using his uh, RV mall vacuum cleaner. So uh, I'll just give you a little take on my part of leaving our home of Milwaukee. So we've actually been here almost three months, and it just went by like a blink. So I do have to say, this is the hardest part of getting on the road full time. Um, I got a lot of time in with my daughter and her family, my grandson, who's almost two and a half, talking up a storm. I'm going to miss him both so much. I also, I also was able to get up to Manitowoc and, and uh, I also was able to get up to Manitowoc and visit my mom a lot and my sister and her family up there. That was great. So um, I don't know, maybe I'll show a picture right here of my daughter and her family. She doesn't want to be on YouTube. Maybe I'll blank their face out. Um, show a picture of my mom and me. And uh, we also got together a lot with friends, did a lot of dancing, a lot of bike riding, um, socializing, cookouts, all kinds of things. But this is something to consider when you are full time and leaving your family and friends behind. It's hard. It's hard. Or maybe my heartstrings are just really short and very strong. So I will be flying back sometime in November um, once we're settled for about a month. And uh, that always helps a lot, getting back home every three to four months to uh, visit everybody. Um, that's something to think about, too, when you're budgeting full-time and you do feel like you want to get back home. Um, you got to budget that airfare in there, too. And the adventure continues. Actually, this coming year, we've got a lot of cool things happening. Um, we're doing a, a caravan tour. We are doing the balloon fiesta. I love that. We've done it before. We're going to do it again with some friends. And also, um, oh, so many other things. Train rides. Um, oh, I can't even think of it. We're also doing something different. We are going to leave miles behind for like 24 days, and then we're off on another different adventure. So I'm glad you guys are sticking with us, and we are now getting ready to leave Milwaukee, heading out west for the winter. Another really easy thing to leave behind is this carpet here to wipe your feet. You'll notice where it was by the stain, and I just literally remembered it a couple minutes ago, and we're a couple minutes from leaving. We also were able to spend a lot of time with Mark's two boys and his sister. A lot of times they, they live a little bit further out, and they're working. His sons are anyways. His one son is out in Washington, flew back with the family, and uh, you know, we, we finally were able to spend a lot of time with them too. So this really truly was a uh, catch up with the family, stay back in Milwaukee. One last thing before we take off. Woo, that was a big step. I'm going to go to the office and make sure we don't have any mail that we did not pick up. So there really is a list. We used to have a big checklist for everything we did. 
and now we have a few reminders. The rest of it we've been doing so often for five years, so it's just kind of routine for us. We decided to hook up the Honda right next to our next door neighbor there because we knew he was going to be gone at work all day and wouldn't bother anybody. I've got Sue lining up the Honda and then I will sit in it shortly and run it through the procedure to warm up the transmission and put it into neutral. We have a rest area there in one and a half miles and the next one's 41 and a half miles and I literally really don't have to go to the restroom that much and I could plan to go to the 41 but in the past we've done that only to discover that that one that I was counting on might be closed so we've learned not to squander our opportunity to hit the restroom and go uh, I'll include some footage here that shows uh, a little lesson that we learned when we go into the Oasis that are uh, really kind of odd rest stops in the Illinois, uh, Chicago area where the rest stop is on either side of the freeway and it's connected by an overhead bridge and uh, facility and service center. So I guess based on how uh, much moaning and groaning I had when we were walking out of the rig. He was moaning. Yeah, that it was uh, appropriate that we stop and get some uh, circulation in the legs. Right. When you're an old fart like me, you got to worry about blood clots and stuff like that. So. Not that we're medical professionals. Hey, good looking. What's, uh, what are you doing? What's your sign? Uh, excuse me. You should not be loitering or soliciting. Move on, mister. Oh, oh, oh. oh sorry. So here we are, six hours later at a KOA journey, and I believe this stop cost us $53. Now this is just the way that we choose to roll. Everybody's different and has their comfort level, staying at boondocking spots. Uh, we're kind of thinking that we're too old for boondocking. We like to be able to plug into 50 amp and run everything we need. We are not gonna hook up sewer and water here. If it wasn't windy, we would have used that fire ring and uh, just enjoyed the solitude of the cornfield. Hey, thanks for stopping in, sharing some time with us, and we will see you again next week.